5. Additions to an asset described in paragraph 2 of this subdivision shall not be exempt from application to the satisfaction of the money judgment. If I made after the date that is 90 days before the interposition of the claim on which such judgment was entered. Or double I. I deemed to be fraudulent conveyances under Article 10 of the debtor and creditor law. D, income exceptions. 90% of the income is exempt, provided, however, that with respect to any income or payments made from trusts, custodial accounts, annuities, insurance contracts, monies, assets, or interests established as part of an individual retirement, the exception in the subdivision for such part as a court determines to be unnecessary for the reasonable requirements of the judgment debtor and his dependents shall not apply and the 90% exclusion of this paragraph shall become a 100% exclusion. Two, 90% of the earnings of the judgment debtor for his personal services rendered within 60 days before and at any time after an income execution is delivered to the sheriff or a motion is made to secure the application of the judgment debtor's earnings to the satisfaction of the judgment and three, payments pursuant to an award in a matrimonial action for the support of a wife where the wife is the debtor or the child where the child is a debtor where the award was made by a court of the state determination of the extent to which it is unnecessary shall be made by the court so basically if you're getting alimony and you are the debtor then the court would have to determine to the extent that it's exempt e exemptions to armed forces members this is like a read you know emblems and stuff however it does not apply to the satisfaction of any order or money judgment for the support of a person's child spouse or former spouse that this does not apply to commissioned officers it says does not apply to commissioned officers only applies to non-commissioned officers private privates and musicians 90 per, uh, F, 90% of any money or debt due or to become due to the judgment debtor for the sale of milk produced on a farm operated by him is exempt from application to the satisfaction of money judgment. G, security deposit exemption. Money deposited as security for the rental of real property to be used as the resident of the judgment debtor or his family and money deposited as security with a gas electric Steam Telegraph or Telephone Corporation or a municipality rendering equivalent utility services are exempt from application to the satisfaction of a money judgment. H. The following personal property is exempt. Any medical and dental accessories to the body, a uh, guide dog, service dog, and any food or feed for it. Life insurance policies. The right of a judgment debtor to accelerate payment of part or all of the death benefit or special surrender value under a life insurance policy is exempt from application to satisfaction of money judgment. Exempt from New York State College tuition, choice savings, trust funds, um, monies in an account pursuant to this, 100% <coughs> is exempt. 100% of monies in an account exempt where the debtor is the account owner and the designated beneficiary of such account is a minor and an amount not exceeding $10,000 or the aggregate for more than one account is exempt where the judgment debtor is the account owner of such account or accounts. So something about the education law and like 100% is exempt but if it's not explicitly like a designated minor or something then it's up to $10,000 or an aggregate of $10,000. Notwithstanding the provisions um, of this, uh, when there is judgment involves convicted uh, funds of a convicted person and all of the funds represent compensatory damages awarded by judgment to a convicted person in a separate action, a judgment obtained pursuant to 632-A shall not be subject to execution or enforcement against the first 10% of the portion of such funds that represents compensatory damages of the convicted person's action provided however 
This does not apply to judgments obtained by a convicted person prior to the effective date uh, of two, in 2001, which added this sentence. Okay, for the purpose of determining, the court shall deduct attorney's fees and then multiply the remainder by 10%. And when the judgment includes compensatory and punitive damages, attorney's fees shall, shall be prorated among compensatory and punitive damages in the same proportion that all attorney's fees bear to damages recovered. L, exemption of banking institution. Um, uh, direct deposit or electronic payments, reasonably identical as statutory exempt payments were made to the debtor's account during the 45-day period preceding the date a restraining notice was served upon the banking institution or an execution was served upon the banking institution by a marshal or sheriff, then $2,500 in the debtor's account is exempt from application satisfaction of money judgment. Nothing shall be construed to limit a creditor's rights or to enforce uh, a creditor's rights under U.S. Code, United States Code, or to enforce a support alimony spousal support maintenance obligation. Nothing in this subdivision shall alter the exempt status of funds that are protected from execution, levy, attachment, garnishment, or other legal process pursuant to this section or any provision of state or federal law or shall affect the right of a debtor to claim such exemption. Um, so, for the purposes of this article, statutory exempt payments shall mean any personal property exempt from satisfaction. Such terms shall include, but not be limited to, payments from any of the following sources. Social Security, including retirement, survivors, and disability benefits. SSI, child support payments, veteran administration benefits, public assistance, workers' compensation, unemployment insurance, public or private pensions, railroad retirement, and black lung benefits. Beginning uh, 4 one twelve, 12 so April 1st, 2012, and in each three-year interval, ending on April 1st thereafter, the dollar amount of the exemption provided um, shall be adjusted. Um, oh, it's going to be adjusted. So right now, I think it's 2500 I guess it's going to be adjusted. The superintendent of financial services shall determine the amount of the adjustment based on the CPI um, for the most recent three-year period ending on December 31st preceding the adjustment with each adjusted amount rounded to the nearest $25. So like it's probably up quite a bit higher than that. Um, beginning on April 1st, 2012 and at each three-year interval Ending on April 1st thereafter, the superintendent shall publish the current dollar amount um, in a bunch of sections, together with the date of the scheduled adjustment. The publication shall be substantially in the form set below. And there you see it laid out. Current dollar amount in all capital letters. Here it is. Current dollar amount of exemption from enforcement of judgment under New York Civil Practice law and rules 5205, 5222 sub E, 5222 sub H, 5230 sub A, and 5232 sub E. And that was 5205 sub L. The following is the current dollar amount of exemption up from enforcement of money judgments as required. Amount. Then you list the amount there. This amount is effective on April 1st, year. Uh, you write in the year shall not apply to cases commence on uh, commence before April 1st other year um, the next adjustment is the next adjustment is scheduled for April 1st and list the year um, adjustments made under paragraph I of this paragraph shall not apply with respect to restraining notices or executions affected before the date of the adjust the adjustment M nothing in subdivision L shall limits the debtor's exemption rights in the section or under any other law. N. Notwithstanding the other laws, the term banking institution shall mean all banks, trust companies, savings banks, loan associations, credit unions, foreign banking corporations, incorporated, chartered, organized, or licensed under the laws of the state, 
foreign banking corporations maintaining a branch in this state and nationally chartered banks. The provisions um, of L, M, and N of the section do not apply when the state of New York or any of its agencies is the judgment creditor or if the debt is for support judgment, um, provided that such restra the restraining notice or execution has to contain a legend in 16 point bold type with the following language and there you see it listed judgment creditor is new york or its agencies or municipal corporations and slash or the debt enforced is for child support spouse support maintenance or out money 52 23 disclosure at any time before a judgment is satisfied or vacated the judgment creditor may compel disclosure of all matter relevant to the satisfaction of the judgment by serving on any person a subpoena. The subpoena must specify the parties to the action, date of the judgment, amount of the judgment, amount due thereon, the court in which it was entered, and shall state that false swearing or failure to comply with the subpoena is punishable as contempt of court. 5224, this is a little bit of a longer one, um, kinds of subpoenas. So you could serve any one of these three subpoenas. The first one is a regular subpoena for a deposition on oral or written questions. Then the next one is a subpoena due to requiring the production of books or papers um, to be produced at a time and place specified therein. And then the last one is the one that I think they serve on banks and shit all the time, which is an information subpoena. And that one, you can serve it by registered or certified mail return receipt requested with a self-addressed stamp envelope. And the subpoena must be answered by answering the question in writing under oath by the person upon whom served if an individual or by an office of direct to agent or employee having the information if a corporation, partnership, sole proprietorship. Um, that's not really written too well, but I get the idea, I think. Um, each question shall be answered separately and fully, and each answer shall refer to the question to which it responds. Answers shall be returned together with the original questions within seven days after receipt. So an information subpoena, return receipt requested, certified registered mail, seven days you have to answer it. Um, where the person serving the subpoena is a judgment creditor, other than where the state agency or officer is the judgment creditor, the following additional rules shall apply. Information subpoenas served on an individual or entity other than the debtor may be served on an individual, corporation, partnership, or sole proprietorship only if the creditor or his lawyer has a reasonable belief the party receiving the subpoena has in their possession information about the debtor that will assist in collecting the judgment. An information subpoena served pursuant to this paragraph shall contain a certification signed by the creditor or his lawyer stating the following, and this is in capital letters. I hereby certify that this information subpoena complies with Rule 5224 of the CPLR and 601 of General Business Law, and that I have a reasonable belief party receiving subpoena has in their possession information about the debtor that will assist the creditor in collecting the judgment. By signing the certification, the creditor or attorney certifies that, to the best of that person's knowledge, information, and belief, formed after an inquiry, reasonable under the circumstances that the individual or entity receiving the subpoena has relevant information about the debtor. Double I. If an information subpoena served on an individual or entity other than the debtor does not contain this paragraph, such subpoena shall be deemed null and void. Triple I. If an information subpoena served on an individual or entity other than the debtor does not contain this does contain the certification provided for in paragraph I of this paragraph, they may move to quash the subpoena pursuant to twenty three. Oh, four of this chapter, except that such motion shall be made in the court that issued the underlying judgment. Failure to comply with an information subpoena shall be governed by 2308 sub B, except that such motion shall be made in the court that issued the underlying judgment. That's IV. So bottom line is there, information subpoena, you got to respond to it within seven days. Seven days for an information subpoena. The bank or entity or individual responding to the information subpoena must respond within seven days in writing under oath. So it's like a week. Seven days. Just remember seven days.